This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. Today we end with the last and final reading from this book. This is Book 3, Transfer of Training, Chapter 3, Last and Final Section 8. Singularity and Silence The body is a limit imposed on the universal communication that is an eternal property of mind. But the communication is internal. Mind reaches to itself. It is not made up of different parts which reach each other. It does not go out. Within itself, it has no limits and there is nothing outside it. It encompasses everything. It encompasses you entirely, you within it and it within you. There is nothing else anywhere or ever. Text chapter 18, section 6, para 8. The belief in separation from God and the misidentification with the body is the block to vertical communication in the mind of God. The body, brain and senses seem to communicate information. Yet nothing on the horizontal or linear plane has any meaning whatsoever. As the Holy Spirit uses words and symbols to help move beyond the need for them, a retranslation of perception occurs. Thus the Holy Spirit uses words to go beyond the words, uses the body to teach that, literally, there is no body, and uses time to teach that there is no time. Healed perception is the realization that the cosmos is a singular cosmos of ideas and that there is nothing outside of mind. The singular mind is a forgiven cosmos. For the subject-object split of misperception has been unveiled as impossible. There are no private minds with private thoughts, walled off from each other by flesh, and separated by time and space. Universal communication, which reflects the mind of God, has been restored. Complete abstraction is the natural condition of the mind, but part of it is now unnatural. It does not look on everything as one, it sees instead but fragments of the whole, for only thus could it invent the partial world you see. The purpose of all seeing is to show you what you wish to see. All hearing but brings to your mind the sounds it wants to hear. Thus were specifics made. And now it is specifics we must use in practicing. We give them to the Holy Spirit that he may employ them for a purpose which is different from the one we gave to them. Yet he can use but what me, we made to teach us from a different point of view so we can see a different use in everything. One brother is all brothers. Every mind contains all minds, 
for every mind is one. Such is the truth. Yet do these thoughts make clear the meaning of creation? Do these words bring perfect clarity with them to you? What can they seem to be but empty sounds? Pretty perhaps, correct in sentiment, yet fundamentally not understood nor understandable. The mind that taught itself to think specifically can no longer grasp abstraction in the sense that it is all-encompassing. We need to see a little that we learn a lot. Workbook Lesson 161 Paras 2 through 4 This is the importance of meditation, the sinking beneath every thought of past and future to the silence within. The time-space cosmos is a tapestry, whole and complete. No thread, no star, no planet, no person, no thing, no atom can be pulled from the tapestry and set off as a thing apart. No thing can be named as if it has a separate existence in and of itself. Wholeness has no parts. A whole mind is a happy, joyful, free mind, for it no longer attempts to define and label reality. In order to forget the reality of heaven, the cosmos was made as a substitute reality, small r. Time and space seemed to crack and divide into trillions of parts, with none occupying the same point in the matrix of illusion. Levels and hierarchies seemed to arise, but be of good cheer. The Holy Spirit sees the illusion as one tapestry. And what but this is atonement? What is the same cannot have separate parts. This is the simple correction to the error of fragmented perception. This is the reference point of non-judgment, for what is one is beyond comparison. The point of release looks on the past as one illusion. This is the change of mind which brings with it the reflection of the light within. The present is actually before time was. Before Abraham was, I am, is the form in which the idea is expressed in the Bible. Singularity is the gateway to the remembrance of abstract light. Christ is the light and you are that. Happiness can never be found in duality or multiplicity. Rejoice! Why look for happiness where it can never be found? God and Christ, Creator and Creation, Cause and Effect are one being. Deep within is everything perfect. Be still and know that I am God, one forever. You are the kingdom of heaven now. Simply do this. Be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is. All concepts you have learned about the world, 
all images you hold about yourself. Empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false or good or bad. Of every thought it judges worthy and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught, nor one belief you ever learned before from anything. Forget this world. Forget this course. And come with totally, wholly empty hands unto your God. Is it not He who knows the way to you? You need not know the way to Him. Your part is simply to allow all obstacles that you have interposed between the Son and God the Father to be quietly removed forever. God will do his part in joyful and immediate response. Ask and receive, but do not make demands, nor point the road to God by which he should appear to you. The way to reach him is merely to let him be. For in that way is your reality proclaimed as well. Workbook Lesson 189, Paras 7 and 8 You are the one Christ, holy child of God. I am that I am. It is humble to accept myself as God created Christ, as one spirit. It is arrogant to cling to specifics and humanness. Let everything be exactly as it is. End of book Unwind your mind back to God. Thank you for listening.